Good afternoon. <clears throat> the, the right honorable Prime Minister, I don't do yeah. <clears throat> the family of Honorable Simon Nyachai, the Honorable the Federal Excellency Governors, uh, Cabinet Secretaries, members of uh, the centers with us here, members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Council of Governors, I wish to first and foremost convey my heartfelt condolences to the family of Honorable Simeon Yachai and the Bagusi community, as well as the people of Kenya at lunch, for the loss of a great Kenyan patriot. Even as we mourn the loss of, Ali, of the late Mze Nyachai, let us celebrate him for his distinguished public service which contributed to Kenya's economic growth. I have personal vivid memories of Honorable Simon Nyachai as a very committed and towering provincial commissioner whom I used to admire while I was a young provincial administrator. I knew him as a very competent and tough public administrator. However, even as tough as he was, he had a lot of compassion and, and also patience with the young officers in the service. I only remember one occasion uh, when we had a meeting on district focus for rural development and he was the chair and we were young DOs and DCs. And uh, uh, the others urged me to ask him a question why those of us whom he had sponsored to America and the US, about 50 of us, when we came back with masters and postgraduate diplomas, why we could not be promoted. He just laughed at me and told me, young man, it's not the degree which can make you be promoted, but I hope your degree will make you efficient and work well so that you get uh, promoted. As a result of his excellent performance as a PC, Honorable Simon Nechai was promoted in quick succession to higher positions of permanent secretary in charge of district focus for rural development. And thereafter, he was soon promoted to the then most powerful position in the civil service, the post of chief secretary. After Honorable Simon Nechai retired from the civil service, he became a member of parliament for Nyaribari Chache constituency. He later served as a as cabinet minister in various uh, uh, ministries. The legacy of Honorable Simeon Yachai will be remembered for many years for his contribution in the various sectors such as the public service, district focus for road development, and also in the various ministries, agriculture, community affairs, water, roads, energy, and finance. As I conclude, Mzee's rich legacy will remain embedded in the history of Kenyan nation for his distinguished contribution to the country's economic growth. His legacy will also be projected by those he mentored and some of those he mentored are with us here such as Waziri, Dr. Friend Matiani and many others they will progress his legacy including uh, his dear son Charles uh, Nyachai and many others may the Lord God comfort the family of Honorable Simon Yachai, and may the Lord God also rest his soul in eternal peace. Asante. <clears throat> Thank you. May I now take this opportunity to introduce the governors who are with us so that they can wave to the, to the, one, uh, to the, to the congregation. 
starting with Governor James Ongwae, who is actually the late Nyachai's governor. Asante sana, governor. Then we have Charles, I mean Nyandaro and governor, Honorable Kimemia, who is also the chairman of the Central Region Economic Block. Is there any other governor around? Okay. Then, of course, we have the, 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 deputy, the deputy governor, Kisi, Joas Mangi. Kuna wengine. That's it. Asante sana. May God bless you. Asante. Thank you so much, uh, COG Chair, Governor Wambora. It's also important to mention that uh, he's uh, sitting next to his deputy, Governor James Ongwae, who is a good friend of mine. I'm being requested by Jeff that KW, KBY Triple One T, you requested kindly to move very fast to your car. There is a patient whom you've blocked. KBY Triple One T. I most humbly now wish to invite the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Coordination, Dr. Fred Matiangi, kindly to take us forward the next program. Karibu Waziri. respect the church traditions, I would like to request that we conduct this segment of the speeches in the most precise manner, and therefore before I say anything, I'm going to ask two national leaders to say something, and then after that, I will make some remarks and invite the Cabinet Secretary for Health, the Honorable Senator Mutai Kawe, who is representing His Excellency the President to deliver the President's message. And uh, to start us off, I would like to invite the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi to make a two-minute remark. Then I will invite the Honorable former Prime Minister, Honorable Raila Odinga, before we basically complete this segment. Oh, sorry, yes. I've seen the former Vice President Kalonso Musioka is here. I'll also invite you. Sorry, I had not seen you. Mama. Martha Nyachai, Mama Grace Nyachai, the entire Nyachai family, Charles Nyachai, members of the congregation, bear with me because now that the masks are part of our life, I will avoid trying to name people individually. But I'll sum it up as friends of Nyachai. Let me take the first opportunity to pay my deepest condolences on my own behalf and indeed on behalf of my wife Tessie, who is with me here today. She is like a younger sister to Mama Grace Nyachai. Let me execute my two minutes as follows. I served in the same cabinet with Mzenya Chai. As young as I was then, he was like the elder brother 
in that cabinet. I was a minister for finance. He was a minister for agriculture. I served my five years as minister for finance and he did his term as minister for agriculture. After the 1997 elections, we switched positions. I became the Minister for Agriculture and he became the Minister for Finance. A very thorough individual, very professional in approach, very candid, fearless. He always humored up cabinet sessions. But perhaps when one looks at Nyachai, you also see somebody who stood for merit. He didn't believe in shortcuts. The integrity of the public service was perhaps at, at its highest during the tenure of Simeon Nyachai. As the Chief Secretary, I can tell you, I saw moments that were both hilarious, but very strange. When Simeon Yachai was Chief Secretary, ministers used to address him as Sir. Can you imagine? Ministers would actually call him Sir because he carried a lot of dignity in that office. There was even talk that sometimes if Simeon Yachai called a PS or called a provincial commissioner somewhere when he was the chief secretary, it is rumored that the PS or even the chief secretary would actually stand up to talk on the phone when even Simon Nyachai was not in that room. Just in case he's watching over you. This was him. And as I conclude, I just say that also as a politician, I had my encounter with him. I attended his cultural events at Nyantarugo, Nyantarago uh, Stadium just to attest to the fact that those who say he loved culture, he did. He was a good man. He stood with his family. He stood with his friends. He was also passion compassionate. He spent time also visiting my father in moments of sickness on his own. He suffered his pain gracefully. He saw the dark side of politics as well. And during that moment, they became friends with the late Moses Mudavadi. It is strange that February 1st is when he was taken by the Lord. He was born on February 6th. His other friend, Mze Moi, was also taken in February. Moses Mudavadi was also taken in February. Let's hope February does not take anybody else. But may his soul rest in eternal peace. May his family continue to live in God's name and to have his favor and to have his spirit moving with you now and forevermore. Muzen Chai, rest in eternal peace. You are a great son of Kenya. Thank you. I humbly invite His Excellency Kalonzo Musioka, former Vice President, uh, I am keen to keep the demands of my pastor. Let us be brief, precise. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mama Martha, Mama Grace, the Nyachai family, fellow mourners. Um, Fred, you were not wrong. I came late, so I quietly sat down. And in fact, I would have been very comfortable not to speak. Because, as I said, when we first paid uh, a call on Mama uh, Grace after the demise of Mze Nyachai, it's very difficult to talk about Mze Nyachai in two minutes. Um, suffice it to say that he was a, a towering personality. Not towering physically, but towering even intellectually. I did mention then that um, Mze Nyachai saw me as an assistant minister uh, in his capacity as chief secretary. I drove myself to State House in a pickup and I was not allowed to drive in. And so here I am, a young fellow from the village Isuko in Sekuru, and, and I see this tall man, President, Uhu, President, President uh, Mze Moi and his chief secretary. So it was Nyachai who saw me in. And uh, at the end of that ceremony, he actually offered to drive me to town. Now that was the aspect that has been mentioned, tremendous human being. But I think it is Governor Ambora who literally captured who Nyachai was. A very strong personality, a go-getter. At no time for anything that he didn't consider professional. And yet, in later days, when we were, as Mudavadi I said, all the, both us, uh, three of us, and many of us were in cabinet, as a young minister for foreign affairs, and him, agriculture, and, uh, and Mudavadi in finance, we would take time to listen to Mze Nyachai in cabinet. It was so clear that although he was minister for agriculture, he had that all-round experience which the chairman of the cabinet, President Moi, would always defer to Mze Nyachai. So his contribution was always hilarious, very deep, very well researched. And then of course he joins politics and I remember him actually covering for me in Nyatarago. He even said that um, he knew I was a family man. I needed that support at that time. And Mama Grace remembers that. Um, and when the difficult issues, he was also a Mze able to listen. And no wonder that um, uh, our elder brother here, David Musila, I saw that from the screen, he was reading the eology. David Musila would take me to Nyachai at night. And Mama Grace, you know, sometimes in the afternoon, and uh, then she will make the famous banana cake, which I still miss. Wonderful family and wonderful human being. So in Simon Nyachai, in losing Simon Nyachai, we have lost an elder whom we would all have been deferring to, the, to, deferring to at this particular time. I want to, on my own behalf, on behalf of my own family, Pauline would have been here with me, but I, Grace knows that um, we truly value the friendship with the Nyachai family. May the good Lord dress his soul in everlasting peace. Amen. Uh, let me take this opportunity now to invite um, former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, to make his uh, brief remarks. Welcome there.
Martha, Mama Grace, the child family, fail among us, God is good all the times. We have come to pay tribute to a great Kenyan. And I'm standing here on behalf of the family of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. Our families have got history. The, the, the late chief Paramount Chief Musa Yandusi was a friend of our father. And as someone would say, he took his elder son, Ayako, of the whom child is named, to Jeremogi when Jeremogi was a teacher at Maseno High School. And told him, he told him, he let you away. Yarmogi took Ayako and paid his school fees. And Ayako used to live in our house in Maseno. The first time I came and met Mze Nyandusi was a small boy in 1954 when I was told by my father that tomorrow in the morning we are going to Kisi. And I did not sleep. Early in the morning at 3 a.m. we took off. Those old, those called box bodies. The journey will take three hours. Arriving in Kisi town at 6 a.m. And Kisi was very cold. We went to a friend in Kisi Hospital, the late Mito Jura, who received us, gave us hot tea, out of which we then drove to Mze Nyandusi's home. And we found Mze there who welcomed us. And uh, as we were taken aside, as they, they were talking now with Jamogi and late Mitojura. That was my first encounter at that time. And that story that they would tell me several times we met, uh, the story of how they would come together. So when Jamogi became the minister for home affairs, when he was in charge of Africanization and provincial administration was under him. That's when he promoted a child to become the district commissioner at that time. There is another friend we shared with, with, with uh, Simon, that is Joe Mino. And we would sometimes sit, Grace knows the corner where we used to sit and they discussed very many issues, history, job, and Simon had attended the same course at Cambridge University those days when they were being trained to become civil servants. So we were great friends. Then another friend we share is um, Mze Madenge there, who was also a, a fellow permanent secretary, a great friend of Simon's. But then there was very much committed to freedom from hunger works. And he drafted Simon into it and would worry. We'd work together, freedom from hunger. And I remember one time as we were approaching Oyaki Way, I started getting cramps. And <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Simon came to my aid to help me to stretch up so that I could finish the, the, the work. I was actually very surprised that older people were able to make it and I was actually going to fail. 
So, we were friends. A lot has been said already about Simon. But there's that human part of him. A very compassionate person. But he also lacked uh, uh, um, efficiency. Trained in the colonial culture of efficiency. So he served so many Kenyans to acquire education. When you go to the United States, you'll find villages filled by Kenyans who were actually beneficiaries of Simon's um, uh, generosity. You go to New Jersey, you go to Texas, you go to um, uh, Minnesota, where my friend, the deputy governor, was. Very many Kenyans there. Many sent to India, to China, all over the world. So he's made a tremendous contribution to our country. Uh, when he became a minister, I was a, a member of parliament. And we were, of course, uh, opposition, and he was in the government. But we worked very closely together with Simon as a minister for agriculture, later minister for finance at that time. Later on, when he had resigned from the government and was in opposition, we again worked together. When we started the Rainbow Coalition together, he came with four people, and we were ourselves, uh, we had come from, broken away from Kano, and we formed the Rainbow Coalition together, because they had negotiated with the late Jobomino. However, when we now teamed up with NAK to form NAC, we had an issue. When I said Kibaki Tosha, that did not go down with <laughs> Simon. <laughs> and with all the times he kept on reminding me how I betrayed him. <laughs> but he remained friends uh, generally right through. So we are actually saying goodbye to a great Kenyan patriot, a man who has done a lot in the service of this country. And the want just to say, may the Lord rest Simon's soul in eternal peace. Thank you. Our friends and um, uh, family of Mzenya uh, Chai, there are so many public servants in this audience who we would have loved to listen to. The Honorable Mother Karua, thank you so much for joining us. We are joined here by virtually all elected leaders uh, from Kisi and Nyamira, led by our senator from Kisi, Mze, Professor Sam Ongeri. Uh, who is here. Uh, I know that by the grace of God we are going to get an opportunity when we go home to speak one to another and we have walked together this journey. Uh, I also would like to recognize the presence of our Chief Justice Emeritus, our elder brother Justice David uh, Maraga who is there if he could stand up and wave. Thank you. And Mwishimua, uh, Mayor Cage, and the leaders of Nairobi uh, who are here, who have worked with Muse for a very long time. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to say this before I invite um, my colleague uh, Mutai Kawe. Of course, before I invite the CSK, we have so many colleagues from the executive branch of government who are here, principal secretaries, the deputy head of public service, Mr. Wanyama Musiambu, who was deputized by the president to sit through the planning for this uh, funeral service, uh, a number of permanent secretaries in the audience, and my cabinet colleagues who are here, uh, CS Minor, CS Omamo, 
C.S. Kawe, and all of you who are present. It's up to his uh, towering father. I actually never thought in my life or never factored in my life that such a day would come. Because for about 20 years, I've had the probably most unique privilege of working close and working with Mze Simeon Yachai. In everything except biology, I am Mze Nyachai's son. Because he raised me, I spent so much time with him, I traveled with him. And um, probably two-thirds of the impact he had in my life cannot actually be verbalized. And it's difficult to describe Mze Nyachai in very few words. And I'm not alone. Actually, if we had time, let me be very sincere here. There are hundreds of people, uh, those that were described by Prime Minister Rael Odinga here, hundreds of young people from all walks of life in this country, from Kisi, from all communities of this country, who would probably be nothing today had it not been for the personal intervention of Mse Simeon Nyachai in their lives. I frankly do not think there is anyone I know who has educated the number of people that Mse Nyachai educated. And I am not shy to say this here in public. When you look at the education and the professional profile of the Kisi community, you have to address the Nyachai factor. The Nyachai factor is the resources that Mse Nyachai mobilized and pumped into the education and professional development of our people. Uh, incredibly generous and always available to support uh, anyone who needed support. And I had this unique opportunity of having a front row seat in his life and seeing him in action. As I often say in public life, I am still using Mze Nyachai's notes, even as I serve as cabinet minister. And I will cling on to those notes for a long time. In the last eight years that I've been in cabinet, uh, there has never been a time until about a year ago when Muse became sick and we couldn't speak very regularly, there wasn't a time, a stretch of time, that I did not either consult him or he called me or he, he actually never called, he summoned us. Uh, to make demands on us on a number of things and for my cabinet colleagues who are here I took all the beating for your mistakes and any time you spoke out of time I am the one who was called and told how badly we are behaving or how it was felt that we are not supporting the president enough because Mze may have retired as a PC and as head of public service but the head of public service in him did not leave and the chief secretary in him never parted, always in control and always in charge of things and always very clear in his mind on what needs to be done. As I said, it will take a long time to comprehensively verbalize what Mze Nyachai meant to very many people, including myself. As I conclude, I just want to ask First of all, thank my mothers who are here and my brothers and sisters from the Nyachai family. I thank you on behalf of the hundreds of young people who passed through Mze Nyachai's hands. Thank you for sharing your father with us. And thank you for complaint or displeasure or unhappiness in this family even when Muse sometimes spent hours with us, was counseling these people, doing this, may the Lord bless you and continue to bless you for that. And lastly, I ask this. For all of us who are here, and the people that Muse Nyachai had a strong impact in, the difficult part of our lives begins now, which is to leave his legacy. And I pray that those of us who have been and will be as the Lord leads 
be given an opportunity to either make a contribution in public service or work with others, may we never let him down. I was actually thinking the other day on Monday night that there is nothing Muse did not do. He trained us on everything. He taught us everything. It's now upon us to leave that legacy and walk in his footsteps. And for our people who are here, Wakusiba Minto, about now is the time to think about those things. Throughout, put all of us together. Sometimes, even some of the kisi for Gabriel Yaki landed Kureso Mark. Takaleto Bokaya Yuga, Takaleto Bochon, that I land Kureso Magayajai. Eh, Unobo Oji, Inomagaya Chan, so met him in the Vions. That Tobeavanto, Toku Erenda, Nanda and Toko and Degas of Gito, and Toko and Degas of Gitelit. Monato Sassini. And once again, we can't thank this family enough for what you have collectively done to all of us by being generous, gracious, kind. You didn't have to do it. And by doing that, you supported your father to raise all of us and to ensure that we are making a contribution to our society. With those remarks, I would like to invite my brother and my colleague, our Cabinet Secretary for Health, the Honorable Mutahi Kawe, who will make some remarks and read a message of condolences from His Excellency, our President. Senator. Charles, the entire Nyachai family, fellow mourners. My job this, this afternoon, thank you very much, uh, C.S. Matiangi. My job this afternoon is a simple one <clears throat> because I am supposed to give the message of condolence from uh, His Excellency the President. But before I do so, allow me to just say one or two things because I too, like the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi and uh, the Honorable Kalonzo, also served with Muse Nyachai in the cabinet. But uh, my service with Muse Nyachai was perhaps slightly different because I had this position where I knew Nyachai's children as my friends because I knew Charles very well Mary and the rest of them and Ken Nyachai was my mono in high school <laughs> and by the way he was also the 100 meters and 200 meters champion in Kagumo high school no matter they say Ugali comes from the flower so he was, he was uh, our, our champion, our 100 meters champion. Then when I joined the cabinet, I then was faced by these wazes led by Mze Nyachai, who was born in exactly the same year as my father. So yes, we were cabinet secretaries, all of us, but as uh, Musari rightly said, you know, in the animal, in animal farm, all animals are equal. But some animals were more equal than others. So in that cabinet, there used to be some animals that were a bit more equal than those of us who are much younger uh, than them. But for me, what I remember most is that Mze Nyachai would ha had this characteristic and when he passed away i really thought about it what was it and it just dawned on me 
that that characteristic was one where he believed in lifting each other up, lifting people up, lifting colleagues up. In other words, there are two ways of creating equity. One of them is bringing somebody down. What they call in, in, uh, in our slangs, pull him down, PhD. And a lot of Kenyans believe that the way to equate us is to bring others down so that we are all equal. But there are those Kenyans who know that the best way of, of uh, creating equity is to bring those who are down up. And that's what I notice most in Muzenya Chai. He believed no matter how young we were, we should be pulled up, taught what is necessary so that we can serve the same way that they did. A man who symbolized discipline, patience also, but more important than anything else, he symbolized patriotism. And that is something that we can copy even as he passes away. As is for his family, I also want to say that at this time, the nation is praying with you because he stood with us in our hours of need. And we stand with you. Mama Lee, we stand with you. Mama Charles, we stand with you. We pray with you. And we pray that the Lord God will rest Mze somewhere comfortable in eternal peace. It is now my privilege and pleasure to read the message of His Excellency the President. It was with immense grief and a deep sense of personal sadness that I learned of the death of Honorable Mze Simeon Nyachai. <clears throat> At this moment of great loss and sorrow, my family and I convey our deepest condolences and words of encouragement to the family, relatives, and friends of the late Mze Nyachai. As we join you in mourning the passing of Mze Nyachai, we also join you in celebrating his accomplishments. Honorable Mze Nyachai was a great son of Kenya whose immeasurable contributions to the nation spanned many decades and inspired millions of Kenyans. In the passing of the Honorable Nyachai, we are all deprived of his leadership, great passion, determination, and energy towards serving our country. Even in death, Mze Nyachai undoubtedly stands tall amongst dedicated patriots of this country. His service to Kenya was characterized by utmost integrity, rare zeal, unbridled commitment to duty, and passionate candor that earned him accolades in three successive administrations. Mzenyeshai was a remarkable leader who motivated all around him to be honorable, decisive, and accountable to the people they serve. They serve the people of Kenya with diligence and devotion in different capacities, including that of cabinet minister, chief secretary, legislator of consequence, and prominent businessman. Kenya is undoubtedly better for having Mzenya Chai, and his legacy is fundamentally intertwined with the peace, prosperity, and democracy that all Kenyans enjoy today. At a personal level, I vividly recall my many interactions with the late Muzenya Chai over the years as an elder, mentor, counselor, and friend. Muzenya Chai always had a word of wisdom, advice, and encouragement for me. His impact on my life shall never be lost just as his vision for this country shall never be forgotten. Therefore, as we mourn the loss of this great son of Kenya, we pay tribute to his legacy, which I trust will be carried on for generations to come. 
Titans of history like the late Mzee Nyachai only die a physical death. For in their legacy, in the millions of lives that they have made better, they enjoy immortality of the soul. Mzee Nyachai will live on forever in our hearts, minds, and memories. And in the history of a nation that is eternally grateful for his exemplary service. As Christians, we take solace from the word of God in Psalms 73, chapter 26, which says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. End of quote. May the Almighty God rest the soul of Mzee Simeon Yachai in eternal peace. Uhuru Kenyatta, CGH, President of the Republic of Kenya, Asanteni. Tunamshukuru Rais Ujumbo umefika And we are honored to have all of you Waziri Matiangi Thank you for setting the pace And It would have been wonderful to have Many of you speak But because We must also Conduct this program In a timely fashion We seek that now we go back to the church And uh, to kick us off is Kemunto Kingi, Daktari, uh, and her group to come and do a song. And uh, subsequently, we shall have a reading from Psalms 121 by the son of the late Mzenya Chai, that's Noah Nyachai, and uh, him by the mother's voice as we now bring in pastor to do the sermon. It's wonderful to have all of you here and I'm also honored to have learned a lot from Grandpa Zenya Chai. The business acumen that some of us have, those have been our mentors with Mze, also not forgetting people like Mze Kangwana Jared and of course now into the church which we've been brought in through the family of Pastor Mambia and the Mochaches. And of course, our wonderful church in Arabi Central West. Welcome back to the broadcast. If you're just joining us, this is Newsline. Many thanks for staying with us. And tonight, Kenya's 12th Parliament is back in business for the fifth session, a session that is usually, usually coincides with seismic political formations. And tonight, we want to train our cameras on the ruling majority jubilee coalition, which has begun with pomp, with the, the ouster 
of Kangata, Irongo Kangata, the senator from Muranga, as the majority whip in the Senate. That, of course, was preceded by the removal of six nominated senators. Uh, we want to talk about all that, what's happening, this happening, of course, as the country prepares for a potential constitutional referendum. And, of course, in 17 months' time, the 2022 general election, what is the state of the Jubilee Party? I'm joined in studio tonight by the majority leader in the Senate, Samuel Pogisio, Senator for the County of West Pokot, and also his immediate predecessor in the Senate, that is Algeo Marakwet, Senator Kipchumba Murkomen, to help us put perspective into some of these issues happening in the majority Jubilee Party. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for joining me in studio tonight. Let me begin with you, um, Senator Pogisio. Yesterday, Kenyans... Uh, what you did to some news, we saw some six nominated Jubilee senators effectively incapacitated. Would you say that the ouster of them, the six of them, and the Muranga senator as majority whip, Irungu Kangata, was done in a fair way in accordance to the standing orders? Well, if, there is, sorry, ben, if, uh, if the answer is supposed to be short and precise, yes, it was done. Um, it, it is the constitution of the Jubilee party and the, of course, the, the standing orders. Uh, so it was done well, if, if that's the thing. But I just wanted to say hello to your viewers and to wish them all this new year. I have not been here in a long time. And so I'd like to specifically say that uh, uh, matters of the party are guided by the, the, the constitution of that particular party, uh, now the Jubilee Party, and, of course, the constitution and the standing orders. We've seen what, what's been happening in the past few weeks, the letter by the 